welcome back. We will start the discussion. We will start the discussion, the discussion again, and then um, tell people that. Perfect and we, we are just um, 
doing harm and we're just adding it in the wrong direction. Our responsibility is to use it because Rashid Bilba says this in his tafsir, he says, you know, all this, um, all the things, all these products that are in, in the earth are not there just to stay there. They are there for our use, so we should use them for the best of humanity, to make the best out of it of humanity, but in the same time, we should not I don't know if this word exists in English, denaturate. So, in French it exists, so sometimes I'm translating from French to English, anyhow. Denaturate, so we should not change the nature of, of the things, but it should stay uh, faithful to its nature. So we should take care of it and manage it in, the, in, the, in a way where we don't harm it, but in a way also uh, to make the best benefit of it for humanity. Sorry for the confusion, but the, the answer is clear. Thank you. Hi, um, um, earlier you spoke about the need for theorization um, and about like how we don't have a frame that works um, or a clear frame at the moment. Um, I'm assuming that every society or culture would have a specific frame. So, for example, the frame in the West would be different for the term of the East. I was wondering, because um, you spoke about warning how, because we don't have a clear frame, we end up using Western references, um, references, and I was wondering, what would be some of your recommendations of other references that we could use so we don't fall under that? Okay. <laughs> he was the one who uh, was, uh, he, he spoke about that. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> can, can you repeat that question, please? Sure. Um, earlier, you spoke about the need for theorization um, and how there isn't a clear frame that we can look at, so we, fall, we tend to fall under using Western references. So I was wondering what are recommendations for us to kind of use so we don't fall under that. Um, and you, were, you were expecting me to I don't know. You were. <laughs> I have a question. 
question for uh, Dr. Ramadan too. Uh, regarding uh, earlier, you said about uh, how we needed to have an access, and from there, you know, a center, and from there we would uh, uh, have goals and means and everything. And then you said about God that we couldn't prove uh, whether He existed or whether He didn't exist. And uh, lately, I've been watching some debates on the internet that have been. Uh, taking place between Muslims and atheists. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Hamza Zorzis, and uh, you know he debates with Lawrence Krauss and some of other uh, leading atheists. Uh, what's your uh, insight regarding the arguments they use about you know causality, uh, the universe not being able to come out of nothing, uh, all the signs that we have, the order, the precise and intricate design there is uh, in the universe. Uh, doesn't this prove, uh, in the end, that there is a superior being? So when we say we cannot prove that God exists, well, maybe we can. <laughs> yes, I, I think that uh, if you are dealing with rational minds, and if you add to the rational minds a sense of sometimes something which has to do with arrogance, you can't prove God. You are preaching to the convert if you do this. I, I have been, you know, debating uh, um, uh, Dawkins and Hitchens and all these people. So the way they are coming to the discussion is not only through rationality. You are not dealing only with rationality. Uh, you are dealing with, uh, as rationally we don't have the final answer, there is no answer that God doesn't exist. And if you go through, uh, you know, all the Western philosophy having I mean, involved, you know, in fact, my thesis was on Nietzsche, but in fact on Nietzsche as a historian of philosophy. So through him, I had to deal with the uh, Greek philosophers, and then with Kant, and with Schopenhauer, and with Husserl, and all these philosophers that he, he, in fact, was dealing with, or who had to deal with him. He was a believer in Nietzsche, who said God is dead. At one point, it's not a question of rationality. Even though you think that rationally you can prove it, or prove the existence, and prove it's your own way of dealing with your own rationality. At one point, there is something that has to come which is not rational. There is a light somewhere. Yeah. So try to prove light. It's not going to work. So, my own take on, for example, when I was with uh, 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 Dawkins in this discussion, is the only point that I was making with him is, in fact, the way you deal with your own rationality is arrogant. And as much as cannot answer some questions, you can't. So I prefer you to be humble rationally than to be so, and that's it. And then you... Uh, you know, I don't know if you, you heard about the, the, the changing position of St Stephen Hawking. He changed position. He, he was saying there is a God, and then now he's saying, no, oh, it's uh, uh, what is called this... Uh, 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 what was the name that he was using? Uh, ah, I forgot that it will come back to me. But uh, he said, now that there is no God, and this has about fluctuation at the beginning, and uh, um, only this. And he's challenging the Big Bang, but without God. Yeah. So, so I, I wouldn't go for such a discussion to prove that uh, uh, you can prove God. That, that's a, it's a rational discussion. If somebody is coming with arrogance with no doubt, it's not, there is no... I, I wouldn't go for that. I don't like this kind of dialogue. No, I, I understand what you mean, but I mean, uh, when I listen to the arguments that the Muslims had to present, they look like they actually made sense. Because you are a believer. No, that was actually... Are you, you are not? <laughs> <laughs> I am, but they were, there was a time when I actually started to question everything, and I had... And I had to be... <laughs> so I, I had to be looking at... Practically not every perspective, but you know the most uh, popular. Ones. I understand, but that's and exactly the point. You know the thing. The thing with the uh, Dawkins and Krauss, in the end, when when they when they what they argue about about the Big Bang and everything is that they're nothing. You know they, they say basically that the universe came out of nothing, but the nothing is actually something. They just don't call it God. 
You know what I mean? It's like they're, they're being arrogant in the sense that... Michael is scared. It's like they're being arrogant in the way that they, they, they don't want to believe in God. That's the problem. Because, you know, these, these uh, arguments that are presented by Tzortus and so on, they are accepted by other athe atheists. Uh, so, so you know? It might be convincing with you or for you because you yourself, you are questioning. Yeah. So you have questions. They are not coming from the same understanding or the same intellectual position. So you might convince or attract other people who are listening to the discussion, that might be. But, uh, you know, when you have, you know, it's a bright man, a mind, for example, when you, okay, he's, he was talking about uh, quantic fluctuation. This is uh, Stephen Hawking. And, okay, uh, bright, intelligent, he had some questions before. And then what? What are you trying to do? So, I, I would... I'm not against being involved in the discussion. I, I think that uh, we have to be humble on this. And even if you are saying, I heard somebody, people, some people saying, you know what? What you are calling nothing is God. That's that's not that's a bit arrogant. No, they are calling it nothing. So keep quiet. Keep quiet. They are at the point where they are. They are calling it nothing. So it might be that what we think is that there is. God is the only thing, and then, except of Him, there is nothing that we have to worship. So I wouldn't go for that. I, I don't think that, in fact, that's not the discussion of today, but I would say that in the discussion to prove God, there are limits in the way we have to deal with it. I, I, this is my intellectual position. But uh, you can uh, disagree. Mm -hmm. no, you, you, uh, you seem to disagree. Why? <laughs> this was my feeling. My vibrations around. <laughs> Can you bring it us? Yeah, try to. Maybe what's one? Okay, but society and the Muslim world, I mean, it's not in a good shape to not say that we are regressing in all the domain. So what's the impact of this study on the reality? Thank you. And another question. So I, I, I think that this is for the, the three of us, especially yes. you. <laughs> <laughs> and another question. Uh, so, why we ended up here? I mean, in this situation. Thank you. Because it doesn't work. Can you ask for that? Why is it not working? Why is it not working? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't work. Okay. So the uh, second question is why we ended up here. I mean, do we really know where we failed? Because if we really know, so I mean, we can fix it. <laughs> we can progress. So that was my two questions.
distant, distant uh, changing. So, but these studies, this kind of studies, are not the cause, the only cause that, or the only reason that uh, um, led us to this, uh, the, to this reality. This is the first thing. I mean, the Islamic studies. It's not just the one reason that led us to the the the, the, the reality. No, sorry, I'm not saying that it's a reason. Yes. It's not. Yeah. 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 This is why we have. I think we we should uh, we should analyze or understand deeply what happened during the last centuries, uh, two centuries, in the Islamic world to to understand why how the changing is uh, uh, happen or happens in the future or how can we change the future so and we are the, uh, uh, the, the impact of uh, or the outcome of this kind of studies is not uh, something that happened in uh, in a short time or a short short term it, it takes a long term to 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 see the the, the results and the change so and this, this is the first point I would like to, to, to mention here. The second point that uh, we, we can't avoid that uh, the reason that we faced in the Islamic world or the Arab world, especially in the Arab world, uh, it's a matter of culture, it's a matter of uh, colonial, colonialism, and uh, it's a matter of the political system at the same time. So. It's not a matter of, of, I mean, the responsibility is not the Islamic uh, uh, scholars or the Islamic fields or whatever can you call. So there are a lot of reasons what uh, guided us or led us to the, the, the reality. So don't don't expect that we will change. We only the, the the group that will change the world. So. We are not, but we are part of, we have a responsibility to do that, or to do something, to do our best, at least. So this is what, what we are trying to do, but we, we don't guarantee the, the results. We're trying to do our best. That's it. I think it's a very big question, and I think, uh, like Dr. Ramatez, um, uh, refer to this question um, is addressed since a long time by the Islamic scholars Malik bin Abi considered that the first um, modern reformists started uh, in approximately uh, the, the period of uh, Jamal Din al-Ghani because he said the, the, before him reformism was not about to um, was not about to um, to assess the reality in order to bring the Islamic intellectual production on the level to the current modern challenges. This was not what reformism was about before Al Afghani. And uh, ar around the period of Al Afghani, this was this was what re reformism was about, because of a lot of things, because of coloni colonialization. And Mary Ben Abi said, actually, colonization was a bad thing and a good thing at the same time. The good thing in colonization, according to Mary Ben Abi, is that it wakes us up, we woke up, and we could notice the situation, the situation where we were. Because we were um, coming out of centuries of sleep, where we were, he says in French, dans un état végétatif. <laughs> so, huh? Like a zombie. Yes, like a zombie, if you want. So, so. <laughs> so, the French way of translating. <laughs> so, so, and then we wake up uh, with colonization and we start to work on this issue that you are raising now. Why? How did we get on this in this situation? And the first, the first reformists, Tahtawi and Tunis, uh, Khairuddin uh, Tunis in Tunisia, and um, maybe also in, in India, um, um, uh, 
Ahmed Khan. Uh, the first, this is the first group of reformists who were, who were actually looking at the West as a model to follow. Because when, when you wake up and the light, uh, you see the light, then you can't distinguish between uh, what, is the, what is good and what is bad. You are, um, how do you mean? Blinded. blinded. You are blinded by the light. So this was the first, let's say, the first group of modern uh, reformists. And they were blinded and so they didn't see the distinction. And uh, uh, Tahtawi in Egypt, he was working for, um, um, for, for the, 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 the king of, of, of Egypt in just translating the, the, the European knowledge into Arabic in order to implement it in, in, uh, uh, in Egypt. And Khairuddin, uh, or Khairuddin Tunisi was also had also these purposes uh, and, and Khan was not far from this. So this, is what, this was the first group. And the second group were more critical. They were thinking also that we, we should benefit from the West, but we should criticize what is coming from there in order to not implement something uh, that is coming from another cultural reality. And, and so they try to find ways to benefit from the West, so to criticize the Western intellectual production and to criticize also the Islamic intellectual productions. This was their, their project and with Al Al Afghani and Abdu and, and others. Um, and, and actually the problem, one of the problems, because uh, like Dr. Martel said, there, there are a lot of problems. It's not only one problem, political, uh, on the political level, on the psychological level, like I, I, I mentioned before, the Muslim on the psy psychological level, he kind of lost hope in his religion. Because religion was not, was not anymore something that it was an ideal. And the reality was very far from this ideal. And it, it's like they started to think that this reality can never be at the level of this ideal. So a lot of them just, to, just left reality and lo lost hope in the, in the reality. And also I talked about the disconnection between their faith and their action. And this was also a psychological situation. But I, I, like I said, there's, there are a lot of factors, and, and I think we need, we need a whole week of summer school just to answer this question. I will add something to, to react the same question. Uh, uh, if, we will, uh, if we can outline the, the main ideas that uh, come to, to answer this question, why we fail to, to be uh, a, a modern or, or a good society, as it depends on what societies are you compare, co compare with. So we had in the last 150 years uh, a lot of discussion about the reform and how what's what's the point that we can do to to improve to, to improve our societies and then one of the one of the, the ideas were was about the start of the key the key point that we should start from is the constitutions and this this is how the the west uh, became successful and the second point that okay they blame the colonialization okay the colonialization is the was the the, 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 the reason why we 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 are in the in this reality because they damaged our culture our tradition and etc the third point that it was like with Muhammad Abdul and his his school of thought they started they they realized that the start point should be with the, the religious uh, reform and uh, and this is what they, what they did. They started with. And uh, the fourth point that uh, was with uh, Jamaldin al Fawani and his uh, trend or his, his direction, uh, which, which was uh, the staff point should, they thought that the staff point should be the political reform. And, um, and uh, the fourth, the fifth, 
The fifth point that, uh, or the fifth idea was, was that the key point should be, should be revivalism with uh, the, political, the, the political Islam and uh, seeking the power, and this is why we should start from, the, from uh, seeking the governance and the power to make the change. Uh, so actually the change, the philosophy of change in societies and in, in the systems has many theories, and, but we're still at the same point till now. So there are a lot of discussion and deep discussions, uh, but we, still, we are still at the same point. So it's not easy to answer this question because we had a lot of discussion about that and we had a lot of traditions and yeah, that's it. All right, thank you very much. I just wanted to add something. It's a comment on which I would like uh, your opinion. Uh, I've heard a lot today that things are going wrong, the world is sad and everything, but <laughs> that's what I heard. But and so at some point somebody said justice is, is something we cannot reach. And what I wanted to add on this is that, okay, true, but the opposite, which would be chaos, I guess, cannot be reached either. So my take on this is that, okay, some things are going wrong, some things are going good and uh, are going well, and, and uh, at some point you mentioned uh, we were debating, we were having an interesting exchange on what is our, uh, what is the reason for us being here? And if I have to answer this from my point of view, it's this, it's because the history of human, humanity has been a perpetual movement between these two extremes, good and bad. And one thing that I think we're here for is to move in the right direction. So w w what I'm trying to say is that although you don't really like the constructivism, it's, it's, it's all relative, good, good or bad. Of course there is, we have uh, a rigid definition of what's good and what's bad because of our religion, but defining the world as bad is, to me, is relative. H how do you see that uh, idea of, of the human being perpetually m moving from one end to another, depending on his action? I, I cannot see human beings as being neutral. Like you said, even if we sleep, we're worshiping God. So even if we sleep, we're theoretically moving towards the positive end, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Does it make sense? That's for whoever wants to answer. <laughs> He's a familiar face. <laughs> Once again, I'm, I'm not sure that I expressed myself quite well if this is what, what you heard. Because uh, I'm not saying it's bad, I'm not saying it's sad. I, I, I'm saying life. It's an ocean. If, if you look at the world the way it is and our life at the end, uh, it would be a sad end. It doesn't mean that uh, uh, everything is bad and, and wrong. Now, you know, uh, if we look at, at history, and, 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 and once again, this is something which was quite well observed by Ibn Khaldun before all the sociologists afterward, which is uh, the fall and rise of uh, the rise and fall of civilizations, and, 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 and that's life. So, so I went through processes and, and, and historical experiences that sometimes are good and sometimes are bad. And uh, even though, for example, I always repeated that. Uh, um, uh, coloni coloni colonialism is completely bad. In a psychological term, what uh, uh, Benabi was saying in uh, Vocation de l'Islam uh, was in fact that being colonizable is revealing things in you that are pushing you first to look at your weaknesses and question your relevance. And in this, there is something. So in ethical term, it's bad. In experimental term, might be good. You see the difference. So this is what he's saying, in fact, and, and this is also what uh, I, I would say that between the good and the bad, what we have to do is uh, 
to understand that there is nothing uh, which is completely bad per se and we are in between two extremes. So when, for example, we look at uh, fragmentation, fragmentation of knowledge and fragmentation of sciences uh, help us to come to a very good command and master of many knowledges and help in many fields, for example, in medicine. Now, this is the good side, the positive side. Now, there is a, a, a negative. So it's up to us to be on everything, being able to look at both and to be selective and to try to build. So not everything is, is bad, we have to look at the other side. The problem is that if we don't have a frame of reference, we can be attracted by the bad. And, and we can take from another civilization. Look at what happened with colonialism, mainly. Uh, if you look at the great ideas, we took almost everything bad and we forgot about everything good coming from the Western colonies. Not So it's more nuanced than that, but I would say look at the situation. So this is the way I look at it, but uh, uh, in our struggle, that, so this is also a sense of humility and knowing that from within ourselves, uh, everything is dual and then you have to deal with everything. So this is in yourself, this is around yourself, this is in history, this is in culture, this is everywhere. So this is what, what this is the meaning of taqwa, which is God consciousness and, and this uh, loving fear towards God and then you have to take a decision, which is an informed decision. So I, I'm not, I'm not uh, uh, portraying the whole thing in a negative way. And as I'm telling you, sadness is not negative. It's not. Negative. There is, there is a sad in, in sadness. <laughs> <laughs> I, I promise. No, 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 Um, if I can, just take it back to the last question, talking about um, the, the wider discourse about colonialism and, and where we are. I think the question I have is whether or not the issue is that we're trying to address the Islamic discourse using Western terminology. So we're talking about the Reformation, we're talking about a Renaissance. And very often you hear a discourse on who is the new Muslim Martin Luther. And I know that Professor Ramadan has sometimes been given that, <laughs> whether he accepts it or not, um, but it, it has been given to you. Um, is that not our problem? Are we, uh, you know, we don't have a pope in Islam, we don't have that sort of clergy in Islam. So I'm wondering if the terminology we're using is actually incorrect and if there is an alternative. What is the terminology exactly? Refor uh, reformation? Reformation, the Renaissance. So we're taking it back to what has happened in Christendom rather than trying to find our own internal discourse. Because we still have our access, we have a direct access between us and Allah. We're not looking at it through Christian eyes, and we shouldn't be looking at it through Christian eyes. Actually, we don't, uh, I think Islam doesn't need uh, Martin Luther. <laughs> <laughs> And when we see that Islam needs Martin Luther, that means that we are following the West. So Islam doesn't need Martin Luther. But we should, we should I think this is the big mistake that we had in, in the last uh, 150 years ago. Uh, because we were looking, we were fighting together between contradictory views in, 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 in attempt to find the, the answer on the very big question that what's wrong in our, in our societies and, 
in Islamic and uh, and Islamic societies. Um, but I would like to react at the same time to the the, the former question that uh, the life is. What's wrong today? Okay. Uh, life is is this. Life is. Uh, I would like to express the same, the same <laughs> meaning. Okay. So we created the human being in suffering, or I don't know, uh, or so life is struggling. Two parts: the first life and the second life. The first life is the yeah, it's the uh, um, it, it's uh, it's cabin, it's suffering and challenging and, and and struggling for for the values, for the good things, good actions. And this is why we are we are we are responsible for uh, building building it. Stamalakufi as as Shashopi said, and then. And this is our responsibility, but and the dar the, the, the happiness life is the second life. It's, just, it's not just the first life. So, but it doesn't mean that we have to accept suffering. So, it's not that. So, I mean, suffering is not the goal. It's not the objective of the life. No, it's not that. And I think we have the religious, the religious discourse, Christian and. And, and, and Muslim discourse or Islamic discourse has has a have a problem with with the, the meaning of the life. So they 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 understood that life is suffering. So it's not it's not suffering from this sense. It's it's struggling for for being good or for doing good actions. But it doesn't mean that you have to accept and uh, adjust uh, with suffering. That's it. I also agree that we don't need a, a Martin Luther. Uh, moreover, if we know who he was, because it's quite troubling, say as if he was coming with uh, 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 somebody who was a literalist. You know, this is exactly what I call the double alienation that we may have. That when we use words and notions, we think it's coming from the West because we don't know our own tradition. That there is something which is called the Yujet Didula Hadinahai, meaning that there is Tajdi, the renewal. And we are not the first to come and say, what is renewal? What is it all about? Because at the end, even Ihya Alumetin, the notion of Ihya, came, we are in the 12th century. End of the, so, so it's not the West. It's not the West. The West came after. In fact, it's through the encounter of the West with the uh, Greek philosophers coming all the way through Christian and Muslim Arabs that they go towards a renaissance. We don't have a problem with that. So we are not borrowing. We are reconciling. We come back to our own notions. But in the way we have to deal with it, and this is why it's, it's very important to understand that our reconciliation with the notions that we have, with, and you know, there is a set of terminologies and notions and we don't agree on the definition, we don't agree on the understanding, but we have all this. So when we come back to this, what is very important here is to be quite clear, as I said, uh, with the framework, why? Because it ends up uh, distorting the notion of renewal and reform 
for something which is we reform to follow the West, or we reform to adapt to the West, or we reform to adapt to the domination. And this is why there is no way to deal with our framework if we are not able to deal with power. And this is why when you think about this, is parallel. the first, the way you enter in Islam has to do with power. That's a question of power. It has to do with power. Who are you following? What are you trying to do? So, in the name of his presence and his power, question all the powers. All the powers. So, so I would say the double alienation is to think of ourselves because we are ignoring ourselves through the eyes of the others. Do you think a formal opening of the doors of Ishtahad would, would Result. It was never closed. This is a myth. This is a this is a wrong understanding of history and some scholars. It was never closed. This never happened. Just uh, uh, statements and powers. So this is my position, and, and uh, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't go for anything which has to do with closing the gates. It was never happened in history. So, um, first I wanted to um, just kind of have an overview of this whole methodology that's being presented. Because uh, I understood it on several different levels, kind of like upstream and downstream. And the most upstream level was kind of the purpose of life, and that's where we looked at vicegerency. And the thing is, I have questions on each of the levels. So, so first was the whole purpose of life. The next level down from that seemed to be the think the principles that are needed for us to fulfill that vicegerency, which you mentioned uh, freedom, which begs the question, are there others? Um, the next level down from that was the philosophy of law, like the maqasib of Sharia. <coughs> and down from that, you've got laws, and with the laws, you've got goals and then means. Right? So, firstly, am I, we're on the same page that these are the levels that we're kind of being presented. Good so far. I think that there is more than that. This is this is what you got from three talks <laughs> yeah. that were not all, no, because it was not completely all connected. So the first was very much about you know the way you deal with the prophet, uh, peace be upon him, his authority and, and the text, which is not exactly what was so so these are three angles that complete each other, are interconnected, and they are overlapping dimensions, but they are not exactly the same. So to extract from this a whole methodology that is clear, uh, I wouldn't say that you can do this. Mm -hmm. Even though I can see things that I said in what you summarized. Oh. I'm not sure that uh, so, Dr. Montaz will see something, or uh, even the way uh, 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 Shashanti was, was putting it. Okay. So now my questions. So, so you might choose two. Okay. Because there are lots of. I think that I saw many people. So uh, starting with uh, Professor Shopee. So are we taking for granted that vicegerency is the overall purpose? And do we have ideas about what other purposes might be? Or is everybody agreeing on this? And secondly, you mentioned that the maqasad of Sharia can come out of that. Um, that can be a foundation for figuring, because there's been no absolute consensus over the maqasad. So are we taking it for granted that it is vice And if so, can we now therefore lay out what the maqasad should be? Because like you almost said it, but you didn't quite. Um, so that's the first question. The second question is... So, so it's the first double question. Yes. <laughs> so the second question is, the whole uh, radical reform book was seemed to be focused on law. So this whole thing has been framed within law itself. And my question is, this framework seems like we could use it for any subject, using the Quran as a basis. So it could be used for psychology, for other social sciences. So why focus on law? And it seems that the, this is another double question, it seems that the end of all of the whole legal process will simply be a more accurate law. 
Um, and most of life's problems aren't really solved with a law. So, so why do that? Four that questions. That's four. Uh, the Khilafah is it the highest objective of which the, the uh, human was created for. Um, I think when we look at uh, literature, uh, often like we, I, said, uh, I said before, we, we can find that uh, some scholars uh, say that the highest objective is the Ibadah. But like I, I mentioned, this is problematic because the Ibadah is, is, uh, this is uh, the, pur the purpose of each element of the creation, not only human being. So, <clears throat> is there a consensus between the scholars that Khilafah is the highest objective? I can't tell, I can't tell you this. I don't, I don't think there is a consensus. Um, do I consider that it's the higher, it's the highest purpose? Yes, because like I said, uh, when dealing with the, the verses talking about Khilafah, some scholars, and especially um, Al-Hanabila, uh, I mean on the Aqidah level, not on the Fiqh level, Hanabila and the Aqidah level, so Ahl Hadith. Um, they, most of them, not all of them, most of them refute the fact that human being is Khilafatullah for the reasons I mentioned before. And they said, no, human being is Khilafah of the human being that the generation coming after the other generation will replace the, so each generation, generation will replace the other generation. But this is problematic. Because in that, if we interpret Khilafa in that way, that means that animals are also Khalifa, because they are replacing each other. And also, if we if we put it that way, who was the Adam Khalifa? Adam was Khalifa of who? It was not, nobody was before him. So this is for me. This is a, a problematic interpretation. So the the interpretation that the human is Khilafa to Allah. For me, this is the most uh, uh, the most uh, coherent interpretation, and I think if we look at um, if we do an induction of the Sharia, if we do an induction of the text, we can come up with this this objective of khilafa, because like I mentioned before, we can see that finally all the prescription and principles of Islam are ending there, are ending in the management of the other, in the management of the human. Uh, society and management uh, of the of the of the nature. Everything is ending there, and this is something that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala left for human being. How comes everything is managed by Him except of this part? So I mean, inductively we can and, and deductively we can come to, to this conclusion. And I don't, I, I can't, I can't uh, guarantee you that there is or there will be a judgment on this. Uh, about the, the maqasid as a as a param about um, khilaf as a parameter of maqasid. Um, actually, like I said before, there is a debate amongst scholars, uh, modern scholars. But also, this debate was also there, more or less, uh, amongst older scholars like Ibn Taymiyyah, who were arguing to add maqasid to, to the cl five classical ones, and. So today, the scholars are devised. Some argue that this is immutable because the maqasid uh, are not changing. The Islam came with purposes, and its purposes cannot change. Islam cannot change its, its purposes. And others argue that this is a historical classification. They agree that the purposes are not historical. The purposes in their, themselves are universal. But the way that the old scholars classified these purposes and categorized them and prioritized them is historical. And today we can have priorities in the reality uh, that can lead us to add uh, to this maqasid like the priority of Hebel Bia, the protection of env environment, etc. And I think one of the main issues here of this disagreement is that there is no clear parameter of defining the higher objective. What is the parameter of defining the higher objective? And I think Khilafa can be the right parameter because it's the highest objective for which he was created. Um, <clears throat> to answer to you two other questions. 
Um, uh, look, I, I think that uh, uh, it's not exactly what I did in, in, in radical reform. And this is why, I, to tell you the truth, many of the, the fuqaha who were trained in fiqh or people who were trained in al maqasid didn't get the essence of the book. Because, in fact, in the introduction, I'm saying something is that this is out of my 20 years in the field. Of, you know, my training first was in fiqh and fuqaha and masail fiqhiya and, and fatawa because I was dealing with the West and trying to find a way, so I came back to this. And I, all my studies were that. And, and at one point, what I'm saying in the introduction, that I, I reached a limit that we are not. We have been talking about ishtihad, we have been talking about uh, tajdid, and we are not meeting uh, the, uh, or addressing the questions and, 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 and leaving out to the challenges. And then, in fact, the book is starting from the legal tradition and getting out of it. If you understand the book, I'm getting out of it. I think that as long as al maqasid are based on this understanding, maqasid al sharia are based on the legal framework, and then they came first from the legal, this is what I'm explaining in the book, and then you come with overall things and say, you ask yourself, do we only have to add one or two, for example, the discussion that I had with some of the scholars that, you know, we have environmental issues now, so in environment should be one of the maqasid that, Okay, that's fine, but that's not the point. For me, the point is that I have, in fact, I have a problem with the soul of fiqh. I have a problem with al maqasid understood from this angle, and I'm coming to something which is new. No, we have, and in fact, I'm proposing something in the book which is a new way of dealing with al maqasid which has nothing to do with the law, a new chart, with starting with a deen and maslaha and peace and nature and life is completely different. In fact, it's based from a concept of life, a philosophy of knowledge, and a philosophy of love. But under this big picture, not coming out of it. So I'm getting out of that. I think that this is, I have a problem with uh, some of the scholars. I said, what's that? All this is already done by the scholars. They didn't get at all the substance of it. And even in the way you are reading it, it means that uh, uh, the link with the other dimension, which is coming with the big picture, the big vision. Uh, and I'm not obsessed with the concept of uh, uh, Khilafah, even though I think the same. I think it's essential. And I think that this is uh, also something which has to do with our, our reaching and touching all the different fields, from the spiritual, to the intellectual, to the cultural, to the political, to the economic fields. Everything is there, if you think about it. And the way I see it with the Khilafah is the way we have towards ourselves. You enter as a Muslim by saying a Shahada. And you have to be before human beings as a Shahid. And even the notion of Dawar al Shahada as the global world now to be Shahid, al is something that is not, for me, it's not understood, which is the very meaning of uh, being. Uh, a witness of what? What are you with? I think that this is all connected to this notion. But I'm getting out of uh, being obsessed with rules by saying I need to put the rules into something which is wider than that. <coughs> so this is exactly the so so I can tell you something that uh, up to now with criticism that I got from people I only sat with three people who got the substance of radical reform up to now. Except this, I, I don't see that people are talking about things that are completely marginal in what I'm trying to say. And it's not a legal input. No, it's not. And it has a big impact on the legal thing. We have uh, presentations now from students, so I think that uh, I don't know how many wanted to ask still questions, but if uh, uh, I think it will be difficult. Let us keep your questions, let us have the presentation so we can ask the three of you to come uh, and to give us that presentation.